So my topic is uh, what's new for adjuvant and neoadjuvant for gastroesophageal and gastric cancer in 2022. Uh, if you see ESMO guidelines uh, for the limited state disease, uh, we proceed with uh, straight away resection for early T1s and T2s. Uh, for squamous cell carcinomas, we have two strategies is uh, neoadjuvant chemo uh, radiotherapy followed by operation or a definitive chemo radiotherapy. And for adenocarcinomas, we have neoadjuvant chemo radiotherapy as well as perioperative chemotherapy. So it is very simple uh, to treat uh, the current gastroesophageal cancer space. And the reason why we have moved to neoadjuvant space in uh, this group of disease is to treat early occult metastasis. It is better tolerable. We can have a response, early response assessment. And of course, we have positive study data. So last decade has been uh, uh, made, uh, last decade made a pathway uh, in two main strategies. One is uh, the cross regimen, what was in 2012, and another is a flawed strategy where you do perioperative chemotherapy. So essentially, this is the simple cartoon of any gastroesophageal carcinoma today that we treat. Either you do cross or flawed, then you undergo operation, and then if you have done flawed, then you proceed with adjuvant flawed. Now we will see in next 10 minutes how new things can be evolved and uh, uh, further complicate this diagram. So 10 years back, Dr. Rajani uh, from MD Anderson and his, their colleagues uh, studied uh, another strategy giving new adjuvant chemotherapy of two cycles followed by chemo radiation and then operation. Uh, basically intensifying the neoadjuvant uh, space. And uh, unfortunately, although it improves a pathological complete response, but there was no improvement in R0 resections or any improvement in overall survival. So uh, you can see the red downs and green ups, and we will try and fill up this whole space over my next talk. So NACT uh, preceding cross or flot uh, was not successful. What about adding more drugs? So uh, again, in last decade, we wanted to try addition of cetuximab. So this was an RTOG study where the radiation was combined with chemotherapy, uh, cetuximab uh, versus chemo radiation. And as you could see, there was no improvement either in distant failure or in any improvement in overall survival. So chemo radiation plus cetuximab also did not show any improvement uh, in the current standard. Last year in ASCO, we had RTOG 1010, uh, where HER2 positive uh, patients, gastroesophageal cancers, were uh, given trastuzumab plus trimodality of therapy compared to trimodality of therapy. And you could see that there was absolutely no difference between standard cross regimen versus cross plus trastuzumab. Now, this was slightly disheartening because one would think giving trastuzumab in a HER2 positive disease would translate into some improvement, at least in distant metastasis free survival, but that was not the case. So uh, <clears throat> again, cross plus trastuzumab did not show any improvement uh, in the current standard. Uh, since last two decades, we've been trying that after surgery for esophageal cancer, giving adjuvant chemotherapy, does it add anything? And you could see the overall survival was, although numerically better, but not statistically significant. Although if you do subgroup analysis, you could see that if patients had node positive disease, there was slight hint that adding chemotherapy after your chemo radiation and operation had some improvement in overall survival. But in the end, the study was uh, categorized as a negative study. And again, this strategy did not make it into the standard of care. So adjuvant chemotherapy after surgery uh, and preceded by chemo radiation was also a no. But then again, two years back, we had this strategy, Checkmate 577, where you have operable chemo, uh, esophageal or gastroesophageal cancer, squamous and uh, adeno. After getting a cross-like regimen and operation, they were randomized to get one year of nivolumab for, uh, versus placebo. And what you could see is that there was a definite improvement in uh, disease-free survival, almost doubling from 10.4 months to 22.4 months. And if you see the landmark analysis at one year, 
45% uh, of patients disease free in placebo arm compared to 62% disease free in uh, uh, adjuvant nivolumab. Now, of course, there was a problem uh, with all the current trials that we have. The subsequent <coughs> therapy uh, is less to my liking. Uh, if patients progressed on placebo arm, only 7% of the patients actually get uh, nivolumab at some point in time. Now, as you can see, this was not part of the main paper. It was part of the supplement. They didn't want us to read up front. But nevertheless, so that might have skewed the overall survival or disease-free survival results. There are some criti other critical reviews of Checkmate 577. If you see the uh, forest plot, uh, it was the squamous cell carcinoma, which was driving the majority of benefit and adenocarcinoma, although numerically better and statistically better, the benefit was not high. Now, uh, another uh, question was, if you had a better YPT0, nivolumab did not seem to do better. If you had a YPT3 or T4, uh, uh, nivolumab uh, was slightly uh, 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 not doing better. So again, this was spurious, I think so, because YPT0, you could see placebo arm as only 5.2. Uh, so I think so this was a spurious forest plot. Nevertheless, something to be questioned about. Uh, another spurious finding was if patients started after 10 weeks of treatment, there was a benefit, while if patients started before 10 weeks of randomization, there was no benefit. Again, there was no explanation for this finding. And initially, Checkmate 577 wanted a tumor PDL1 or what we call as TPS score. Uh, and we know in gastroesophageal cancers, TPS score of PDL1 has no impact on any efficacy with immunotherapy, and so was the case in this scenario. And you can see the gastroesophageal junctional tumors, which are predominantly adenocarcinomas, did not seem to derive major benefit, while the esophageal cancers were deriving all the benefit. Now, last year, ASCO had a subsequent results of uh, Checkmate 577, where they showed that distant metastasis-free survival which is an important endpoint because these tumors often fail distantly or also improved in this trial. So nivolumab, uh, NCCN and FDA both endorses this strategy as category one. As you can see, after operation, nivolumab is given category one and FDA also endorsed this strategy in May 2021. So for the first time, after 10 years, we had something in green uh, that after cross, if you've done surgery and have uh, no pathological complete response, you could do adjuvant nivolumab. Now, what are the new things what we are looking at for next three to five years? There are similar studies like Checkmate 577 studied by different uh, drug products. So this one is the AstraZeneca Durvalumab where you do chemo radiation followed by operation. And after that, you give one year of Durvalumab. And the initial poster presentation in uh, last year's ASCO showed that the two-year overall survival was around 70%. Now, of course, these were small patients, 37 patients. But uh, again, the same signal what we are seeing with nivolumab is also being seen by durvalumab. Uh, another presentation which came this year ASCO just last month was giving tesliluzumab uh, that was in China, where uh, three cycles of chemotherapy, the SOX chemotherapy was combined with this uh, PD-1 inhibitor. And then uh, patients underwent uh, uh, D2 resection. This was neoadjuvant immunotherapy. And what the major endpoint was ma uh, major pathological response. That means uh, what was the path CR? And you could see these red bars where the pre T staging and the next is the post T staging. Five out of 21 got a complete pathological response, and another seven of them got a major pathological response, further suggesting that checkpoint blockade could be propelled into neoadjuvant space uh, rather than adjuvant space. So, this was uh, as a poster presented just last month in ASCO GI. Uh, there are two big trials which are coming up probably in two to three years. One is the European effort, the EORTC led by Dr. Lordic, uh, where you combine uh, immunotherapy, NEVO plus EP, 
uh, with flot like regimen so if you given pre operative chemotherapy and undergo operation and if you do not get pathological complete response you are randomized to either continue chemotherapy versus give neo plus et and we will be very exciting to see uh, this uh, the results of this trial uh the similar trials uh being done in america by the ecog group where there are two randomizations uh one is along with cross you either add nivolumab so it is cross versus cross plus nivolumab and once you get operation again there is a randomization that it is one year of nivolumab versus nivolumab plus ipilimumab that is slightly an overstretch i think i would have liked an observation arm but nevertheless these are two large randomized phase 3 trials which we are uh, eagerly anticipating the results for another interesting poster presentation this year's gi asco was a kun lun study uh, yesterday i heard dr norona's presentation about esophageal cancers getting definitive chemo radiation followed by metronomic chemotherapy many of the patients do not undergo operation in our country so this study is like that you get a definitive chemo radiation and then after that you get one year of durvalumab versus placebo so we are waiting for this study as well interesting uh, study uh, presented again this year gi asco by dr andre uh, was to was neo nipiga that was neo adjuvant nivolumab plus ipilimumab in gastric cancer who are msi high so mind you 6 to 8% of all gastroesophageal adenocarcinomas could be msi high and treating them with neo adjuvant just nivolumab ipilimumab uh, so 30 patients were there and a whopping 60% complete response was there and if you see a major pathological response it was 70% uh, we have not seen such results in uh, gastroesophageal cancer space so this was very exciting and this study would be uh, propelled into uh, larger studies the last point is a very innovative way of tailoring the adjuvant space is uh, by the memorial sloan catering dr yelena janjijian where they use ct dna to tailor the use of checkpoint blockade in adjuvant space dr viraj will be 2 minutes left for your talk yeah i'm done so <clears throat> so patients who are her to positive gastroesophageal cancers uh, and undergo operation if they have ct dna positive they will be given checkpoint blockade plus trastuzumab this will be a very interesting study again a proof of concept study to tailor only patients who are more likely to benefit so as you can see all these intermediate uh, blue color stars where patients can have checkpoint blockade pre operatively or checkpoint blockade along with flot or checkpoint blockade uh, with in msi high patients or using ct dna i think so in next 3 to 4 years uh, we would have all these in the green space and uh, the era for gastroesophageal uh, oncology looks promising and i think in conclusion uh, this decade is for gastroesophageal cancers uh, thank you for your patient listening